My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. For the privilege to worship to love you and to walk with you thank you lord for the quickening of your spirit we've not chosen you because we are wise we've chosen you because you've helped us and so even tonight we are persuaded that you open our hearts to understand and to follow even as you show us great and mighty things that our eyes have not seen neither ears heard Neither has occurred to the heart of man. Take all the praise, take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. God bless you. Again, you're welcome to Bible study. Thank you for coming. I know weekdays can be a bit difficult in Abuja. Having, you know, had to go to work morning to evening and then come straight to church it's a serious matter but we give god praise for for teaching us to know him to love him and to honor him tonight i want to share with us briefly on a very sensitive subject um the things we are teaching we are we are deliberate about it and I want you to also be deliberate. It's important to know truth, master its application before the day of trouble. Because if you are getting to know truth in times of trouble, or you are learning to apply it in times of trouble, you will fail. And you see, life, I'm a scientist. Usually when we go to the lab to carry out experiments, there are lab rats that we, they use for experiments. And you have the liberty to fail and try again. In fact, you do it many times. It's called a hypothesis before it is internationally acclaimed, accepted, and validated to become a law. Life is not like that. It's lived once. And after you live your life, you will be demanded of God to give account. And so you can't go to heaven, uh, heaven and say, um, sorry, I made a mistake. I'm coming back to learn again. That opportunity is not there. It's lived once, forever and ever. This is why you've got to learn truth, master truth. So when the crisis of life comes, instead of pulling you down, it becomes an opportunity for you to give glory to God and to earn reward in eternity. And so the things we are teaching, they are very sensitive it's in the face of crisis you will realize their significance and sensitivity. For example, on Sunday, it looked very casual. We were talking about the name of Jesus. But I can tell you the reason people fall and the reason people stand is because some understand the power of that name and use it correctly while others don't. And so the circumstance that becomes a promotion for one man can be the same circumstance that destroys another. The difference between who is standing and who is falling is their revelation and application of that revelation. And nothing is as significant as understanding and applying correctly the name of Jesus Christ. I took time to show us that all the names of God in the Old Testament, amongst other things, captures three things. Number one, it reveals the nature and the character of God. Number two, 
it reveals the will of God. And number three, it reveals the abilities of God. And I reveal to us how that all the names of God captured in the Old Testament are encapsulated in the person and in the name of Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible said, It pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And I reveal to us that as touching the name, he gave him a name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he bore, he embodied the Godhead and he bore a name that was representative of the totality of the Godhead. This is why I said we believe in the name of Jesus, we are saved by the name of Jesus, we are baptized into the name of Jesus, we receive eternal life by believing the name of Jesus and we cast out devils by the name of Jesus, we have victory in life by the name of Jesus. As important as this subject is, there are many persons who never understood it and who are not applying it. Every time they have problem, they run to people and they come back through that same cycle to the same spot going nowhere in life. And they will not sit down and learn and apply what can make the difference in their lives. The worst thing is that we love emotion so much. And when it's emotional, we are okay. And these emotional things we do most of the times take us nowhere because there is no understanding at the foundation. This is why sometimes you have to settle down to learn the facts, apply the facts, and then begin to check the results you are making and, you know, calibrate your progress. Tell yourself, I was here, now I'm here, and this is where I'm going. This is what I did to live here, to get to this place, and this is what I know I must do to live where I am now, to get to where I ought to be. When you start living deliberately like that you discover that your life will not just be more impactful but you will fulfill destiny and you will fulfill destiny faster and there is no joy in fulfilling destiny late I know we talk about process but process is not <laughs> maybe I should start this message first <laughs> we talk about process but if you are not careful you will discover that you are set back in life and you will assume you are going through process. Process does not mean you should fulfill destiny late. Process actually means align to God early. Understand what God wants, do it and make progress. So, not fulfilling destiny has nothing to do with process. And fulfilling destiny late has nothing to do with process. You can finish process at 25. And you will impact your world, change your world at 25. And you may realize that there is such a thing as process at 90. Your age is not what determines the speed of process. And number two, your own process may take you 10 years. Yours may take you 20 years. It may take somebody else six months. That it took you 10 years does not mean everybody should go through process in 10 years. That it took you 20 years does not mean the timetable for process is 20 years. It's when you align to the will of God that your process completes. And your process can take three months, it can take six months, it can take one year, it can take ten years, it can take twenty years, depending on your degree of yieldedness. The day you comply and understand and align, your process comes to an end. So two things you need to learn is that fulfilling destiny late has nothing to do with process. And number two, the time it took you to complete your process is not a timetable for every other person. Are we together? Because if you are not careful, you will be wasting away thinking you are in the school of process. You are not. I taught you already on process so I can speak like this. How many of you remember the seven classes in the school of process? I taught on it extensively so I can say some of these things. And I'm saying this because most times in Africa, we don't pay attention to facts and apply them. We are just excited doing what we are doing without regard or recourse to results or whether we are making progress or not. We are just there. You meet some people, they say they are praying. And they are just there praying. Ah, they say, no, this country, we must take over Nigeria. And they have prayed for 15 years. And there's nothing wrong in praying if you are called to be an intercessor. But if you are a businessman and you are in one location praying for 15 years, something is wrong with you. If you are a lecturer and you are in one location praying for 20 years, something is wrong with you. 
If you are if you are not a core intercessor, pray and be making progress in other aspects of your life. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? But if you are called and your life assignment is to intercede for the nation until it's delivered, sit there. You will score more marks sitting in one place. And somebody else will score more marks moving from place to place or doing other things that God has committed to you. You need to understand these things. And the only way you can understand these things is to find out how spiritual things are done and begin to check your progress this spirituality of not marking your progress and just doing something and you are excited about it is foolishness there are people today they are just in one location doing nothing when you ask them they say they are in the school of process this person is in the school of process yet he wastes 20 hours of every 24 hours he went somewhere because god told him to go to a mountain and pray and in this mountain after three weeks he has five friends and they will talk from morning to evening. They will loit, move around, waste their lives. And after seven years, they say, we have been on this mountain for seven years. You have been distracted for seven years. But we are not taught to check the progress of our lives. Because you are emotional about it, does not mean you are making progress. So it's high time we reduced some of the un, 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 undefined emotions and find out this thing we are doing what is the progress we are making what is the level of mastery we are gaining what is the level of impact we are making and begin to judge our lives honestly and factually because if we continue like this there will be a vacuum in our generation and God will raise another because God's assignment must continue and when God starts raising the next generation don't you dare be jealous and come and start saying when do you think you came here do you know how long we have been praying? You have been praying, you didn't take responsibility. The next generation came up and in addition to prayer, they are taking other responsibilities and God is using them. What is your business? You now come and say the guy is 19 years old and he wants to show everybody that he's here. You are not winning souls. The brother is winning souls. God will open doors for him to win souls. What is your business? This is the problem we have and it's because our Christianity is not factual. I know you have been studying and you have read your Bible cover to cover, but what have you used that revelation for? I know you have been praying and you have prayed there for four years, but what are the things you can point and say, this is what my prayer did? These are the things you must begin to do so that you don't waste your life. That's not my message. Praise God. Tonight, I want to share with us on the subject have titled operations of the spirit of this age there are too many young people wasting if you come to church today and say how many of you understand anything about leadership come this way you'll be amazed you can come to a church where people are on fire for God and you now say please we need a governor we need three people to go to the Senate and we need young people when you say young men come on board be careful you may be shocked don't just shout young people we need young people we need young people you'll be shocked because if you who is the young man is not ready what makes you feel the next young man is ready if they send you to the senate today do you have something to say what if they call you now randomly and say speak to the world about the problem of Nigeria and what should be done don't look at anybody just imagine you are the only young person here and they now call you and say what is the challenge of Nigeria and what do you think we should do what should you do about the economy what should you do what will you say because not all of us here will be preachers there are few who are preachers who are praying fasting and they are doing well but not all of us will be preachers. How many of us can go to the economic sector and make impact? How many of us can go to government and make impact? This is the crisis we are having. And that time has come for everybody to wake up. Because our world will place a demand on us. The kingdom will place a demand on us. And when that time comes, be ready. Don't look at any other person. If you are not ready, assume nobody is ready. And so wake up and prepare yourself assuming make the assumption that you are the only person available to make the difference 
If everybody begins to think like that, there will be a change. There will be a change. Very serious change. But it will begin from you beginning to vet and score your spirituality. Don't just do things for the fun of it. When you pray, ask yourself, what are the impacts generated by this prayer? First of all, on me, how am I being transformed by this prayer? Number two, what are the unanswered questions that are being answered because I'm praying? Don't just rank yourself and say, I've prayed for five years. I have energy for prayer. Stop that nonsense. When you stand up and you are quoting scriptures, ask yourself, these scriptures I'm quoting, to what degree have they impacted my life? And how many impact am I seeing around me based on this scripture I am quoting? You go into music, if you are singing, ask yourself, begin to ask yourself deliberate questions. I'm coming to church every Tuesday and every Sunday. What is the impact it has on me? And what is the impact it's having through me? If there's no impact, sit down and analyze the thing very carefully. Is it that this thing is not impactful or am I the one not making the most of it? And then you begin to take dressing. If it is impactful, then it means there's a problem with you. You will now ask yourself, what do I do before I go? When I go, what should I be doing while I'm there? So that you don't waste your life. There's too much wastage in our generation. If you are coming here every Sunday and every Tuesday and it's not impacting your life, sit down, ask yourself, is this place I'm going to impactful? If it's not, I, rather st I better stop and look for something else. If it is and I'm the one not connected, then I need to find out what I need to do. Because by all means, after six months, it must count. Because if it doesn't count, I've just wasted six months of my destiny. That's how to live your life. Praise God. Praise God. Are you ready for tonight's message? So tonight, we'll look at the operations of the spirit of this age. And I'm sharing this tonight because, partly because of what I've highlighted, and also because there is a serious warfare ongoing. And if you don't realize it, you will just see through time and not make any impact at all. The worst thing to realize at old age is to realize that you wasted your youth. That's the worst thing to realize at old age, that your youth never counted. If you, if you realize that at old age, you will never find fulfillment. The reason many people retire and die is not because they didn't work hard while they were young, but they, saw, they just realized they were not impactful. And so when they sit down, their life is full of regrets. They keep thinking of the many things they should have done that they never did. And they are wondering, how is it that life just ran through so quick and they never laid hold on anything? When did they become 30, 40, 50? And now they are 80 years old and they can't point at what they have done. It's because they didn't realize that life is a warfare. They thought life was form fair. And as they are enjoying themselves through life, they didn't know that every clock ticking, there was a battle in the spirit for their soul and for, for their souls and for the necessary impact that they should have made. And so when you wake up to the realization that we are in a warfare, you will take dressing and begin to live in a more purposeful manner. And so what you need to understand in order to align yourself correctly in this battle is the operations of the spirit of this age. If you understand how the spirit of this age function, you will know what to do for every second of your life to count. I was listening to a great man of God earlier today and he said, I've never seen myself on television. <laughs> he is too busy making impact that there's no time for him to check and see what he's saying. So long as he's concerned, when he has gone, he has moved ahead. There's no time to come. See, the way some people are living this life, if you look at yourself, you will be afraid what you will tell God when you return to heaven. The man said, I've never seen myself on television. Every day he returns home, everybody is asleep. He comes back home every day, 2 a.m. And he leaves the house, 5 a.m. When will he watch TV? 
He is too busy. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have watched everybody that is on TV. You have watched all. Of them. There is a serious homework going on in the spirit realm. Spirits are fighting, and you need to understand how they operate. Before I go into the operation, let me say a few things about this age. The word age is actually the word aeon. I begin the teaching now. It's the word aeon. And the word aeon simply means a period of time in reality, in the spectrum of reality. A period of time. Now, time is actually calculated in terms of ages and generations. Generations are subsets in the set called age. Every age has many generations. In fact, if you study the scriptures closely, you will discover that there are three ways generations are counted. Either as 40 or as 70 or as 100 years. There are certain contexts where generations are calculated as 100 years. In Genesis chapter 15, when God was speaking to Abraham, he told Abraham, for example, that your children will be in captivity for four generations. Then I will save them. When we studied Israel, they were in captivity for 430 years. That means one generation is 100 years. There are other contexts where a generation is called 40 years. For example, he said the generation that left Egypt perished in the wilderness. And we know that they were in Egypt in the wilderness for 40 years. So 40 years, 70 years, and 100 years are the timelines in which generations are calculated. And every age has a set of generations encapsulated in them so why an age is a period of time a generation is a subset in that period of time that is called an age are we together now when you enter into the context of eternity eternity is called the realm of forever and ever but when you check your scripture you will discover that it is called aeons of aeons so what the bible call forever and ever is actually ages of ages so if you come into the context of eternity eternity is an aggregation of aeons that's why you hear me teach you many times that when this age is come to an end god will start another project because before the age of man was activated there was the age of spirits where everybody in the civilization of god were spirits but when god wanted to start a new project he decided to create another age where he included man into his realities so eternity is an aggregation of ages now this age that we are in there is a step a testimony of god that has already been spoken concerning this age in galatians chapter 1 verse 4 the bible made a striking remark about this age it said concerning jesus who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil age that word the word used there is the word aeon it's actually the word age so what the bible is telling us is that this age we are in is an evil age this set of time that we are finding expression in is an evil set of time our generation is trapped in an evil age so if you are walking through this age and you assume that things will be fair you are a novice and you will be a victim because in the context of the divine this age has already been judged and it has been called an evil age number two thing you need to realize about this age is that this age has a god god almighty is the sovereign god but there is another god that has been enthroned over this age i'm saying this so you understand that life is a warfare because many people are walking through life hoping things will work for them things don't work for people by chance there is a spirit that rules this age there is a philosophy and an ideology by which this age is run and the first thing you need to understand is that this is an evil age this is why your friend will betray you because if your friend does not win the war of this age he will know where that evil will enter his or her heart to fight you he will know why he wants you to go down. He's walking through an atmosphere. An atmosphere characterized with evil. And an atmosphere regulated by a God. You know, most people think God is in charge of this world. If God is the one in charge of this world, then he's doing a bad job. 
Somebody asked Rehabonke that if you claim, I, I, will, I, I don't want to run too fast. I will explain certain things to you as I go forward. There is another God ruling this world. It's not everything God wants that is happening now. As far as God is concerned, he wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Are all men saved? Because there is another force that has taken a legal authority to make sure not only what God wants finds expression. And so for what God wants to happen, there must be a force that makes it happen. When you find a man living right, he's not living right just because he wants to. He has passed a battle. He has fought a good fight. He is standing as a victor. His good life is a testimony of victory in battle. And a man who thinks living right is cheap, let him try it. You will not know when you will be swept off your feet, even though you want to do the right thing. You will find yourself falling again and again. Then you will understand that there are forces regulating things in this realm. And not because God does not have the authority to stop things, but according to his own sovereignty, he has designed a structure and there is an authority he gave to man that he lost. And so God will not sabotage an authority that he gave. So the reason God is not in charge is not because God cannot be in charge. It's because God delegated authority and that authority was handed to the wrong person. And until this age come to an end, it will be illegal for God to hijack things. He's not a hijacker. So this is an evil age. When you go out there to your office, you can't be naive. You are in an evil age. When you are in a relationship, you can't be naive. You are in an evil age. When you are starting a family, you can't be naive. You are in an evil age. If you are, you will be a victim many times. And before you are 40, your life may end. Not because you are wrong, but because you are in an evil age. And your naivety will be your greatest undoing. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.